Catholic family. Saint Faustina and the Divine Mercy. Do you know what day it is? Of course, Mom. It's Sunday. Yes, but it's a very special Sunday. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. Hmm? Do you want me to teach you how to pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy? It's very easy. You only need a rosary. Okay, because I don't know how to pray it. Here you go. This explains how to pray it on the back. Well, we can offer the chaplet for the conversion of those who don't love God. That's right. It'll be like Star Wars. I'll be General Alex, and you... Captain Nelson. <laughs> Grow up! <laughs> Alex, this isn't a game. Anyway, besides, to convert sinners, you will need a weapon more powerful than that sword. Huh? But what's more powerful than my sword? Hmm? Prayer is much more powerful because it reaches God. And He listens. What is it, Sarah? I don't want to pray for sinners. That's like wasting my prayers. I want to pray for the people I love. Like my family or my friends. Bad people don't deserve them. Honey, none of us deserves God's forgiveness. However, he loves us so much that whenever we ask him to forgive us, he does even if we don't deserve it. You see, Sarah, God wants us to pray for those people who are far from Him. There are many people in the world who are very sad because they don't know God. I know. That's why there are missionaries. Yes, that's true, but there are some people who know God but are still very sad because they think that He will never forgive them. They think God is like a very serious man who always punishes other people. I think that we should pray to help them realize that God is a good Father. Now listen, I'm going to tell you the story of St. Faustina. This nun? Yes, indeed. She lived her whole life praying for people who didn't love God. Sometimes very special people are born. Yes, very special. God chooses those people to live very close to Him and gives them the grace to live perhaps without ever becoming famous or without expensive things or honors, just like Jesus, loving in such a way that they're able to give their lives for us. That's what happened to St. Faustina. Faustina felt that she was chosen to transmit the message of God's mercy. From a very young age, God appeared to her before her very eyes, and she heard his words as clearly as if he were made of flesh and bones. Did Jesus really appear to her? Yes. She used to see him perfectly. That's why she knew that God had something very special in store for her. Jesus wanted her to become a nun in order to devote her entire life to him. Jesus himself had told her so. He wanted her to be near him, and St. Faustina's only thought was to stay close to our dear Lord. For this reason, she left her family, her house, her friends, and traveled alone to Warsaw to look for a convent where she could offer her life to God. Warsaw was a huge city. Faustina walked around those streets until she found a church. She thought, if God has called me, he will also tell me where I should go. So she went into the church and began to pray for a very long time. Dear child, you've spent the entire day praying here without moving. Are you all right? Do you need any help? Father, I've just arrived in Warsaw to enter a convent. I know that God wants me to become a nun and to give my entire life to him, but I don't know where I should go. Don't you have any family here? No, Father. I've come alone. Well, that 
good priest sent her to the house of a good family which he knew. Faustina could stay there until she found a convent. Faustina visited different convents, but none would accept her. She felt very sad. Finally, she arrived at the convent of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. So, you want to be admitted into this convent? That's right, Mother. Okay. Well, you must go to the chapel and ask the owner of the house if he will admit you. I've got it! The owner of the house is God, right? That's right. Lord, I want to become a nun and always live very close to you. Please, make it possible for me to stay in this convent. I will receive you, my dear daughter. You are always in my heart. All right, my dear. If the Lord has accepted you, I will accept you as well. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. Yes! After a year, Faustina entered the convent. She was very happy. Faustina used to laugh non-stop during recreation. And many times she would go to the chapel to pray to Jesus hidden in the tabernacle. Have you seen this? Faustina is always praying. Yeah. Maybe she thinks she's more holy acting that way. Please forgive them, Lord. They are not saying this to be mean at all. They don't know that I love you so much that I'd spend all day here to be close, close to you. Faustina used to work very hard in the convent kitchen. She also used to work in the garden. She had so much work that she couldn't always visit the Lord as much as she wanted. Lord, I work so hard that I don't have time to come and spend time with you. I'm thinking of leaving the convent and find another where I can spend the whole day praying. Uh, I don't know. Please help me. Faustina was sad. She thought that maybe God didn't want her to stay in that convent. She was confused. She had many doubts. However, one day, something extraordinary happened. Jesus, why are you crying? Who has caused you such pain? You will cause me this pain if you leave the convent. Here is where I want you to be. I have many good things in store for you here. Now Faustina was happy. She was sure that God wanted her to stay with the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. She would never doubt again. Did Jesus really appear to her? Why, of course! And he didn't scare her! Of course not! Jesus is not scary. Besides, he had already appeared to her many times before. And why doesn't he ever appear to me? I want to see Jesus just as Faustina did. Well, normally, Jesus doesn't really appear to everybody. He only does that if there is a real need for it. Or if he feels that there is a message he needs to tell somebody. Oh, well. But you can go to see him in the tabernacle whenever you want. Yeah, but it's not the same. Well, from that day on, Faustina returned to being very happy. I can't go on. My back hurts from squatting down so much. This is really tough work. Don't you think so, Sister Faustina? Yes, Sister. But because of this, it is a great treasure. A treasure? I don't understand. You see, we can offer all our efforts to God and self in reparation for the sins of those people who don't love him. Oh, well. I hadn't thought of it that way. And if we don't complain about it, this treasure is worth even more. Faustina had decided to offer her entire life to God for the souls of sinners. That's why she never complained. One night, something really very special happened. Faustina was in her cell, and Jesus appeared to her. Why is that so special? He had already appeared to her many times before. 
That's true, but this time it was very special because it changed her life. Listen. <gasps> oh. Paint an image according to the pattern you see with the signature Jesus I trust in you. I desire that this image be venerated first in your chapel and throughout the world. Look! It's the same image as on the card. That's right. It's the image of the Divine Mercy. What does the Divine Mercy mean? The message of the Divine Mercy is that God loves us, all of us, and wants to forgive us. This love was shown when God the Father sent His Son, Jesus, into the world to die on the cross for our sins. God the Father is always ready to forgive us, if we ask. This image has a very long history. Just listen. Faustina knew that those appearances of Jesus were very extraordinary things, and she was afraid of telling others about them because she thought that they might think that she was crazy. So one day, while she was praying, Jesus showed her the face of the priest who would be her confessor and the one to whom she could speak about her meetings and conversations with our Lord. My daughter, you will soon confess to this priest. Tell him everything and pour your heart out to him as you do to me. The words he will say to you are my words. That's why it's so important to always confess your sins to the same priest because he knows us, and he can give us advice. And does the priest tell us what God would say? Yes, God speaks to us through the priest who hears our confession and gives us advice. The day finally arrived when Faustina took her perpetual vows. What do perpetual vows mean? It means that she agrees to be a nun forever. Is it like a wedding? Yes, it's like a wedding in which Jesus is the bridegroom. My daughter, write about my mercy towards tormented souls. Souls that make an appeal to my mercy delight me. To such souls, I grant even more graces than they ask. Today, I place my heart on the pattern, where your heart has been placed. O oh, Jesus, and I offer you my joys and my sufferings and my entire life so that sinners will repent and know that you are waiting to forgive them and bring them to heaven to live with you forever. But I don't understand why we should pray for sinners. Besides, why should we pray for someone who I don't even know? You see, God is offended when someone doesn't love him. And that person suffers because they don't have God in their life. Yeah, but that's why I pray for my family and friends. Santa Faustina loved the world so much and was so close to Jesus that she used to suffer when she thought about the people who offended God by not loving him. Faustina thought, if only they knew how much God loves them, they would be thanking him all day long for being so good. And how did she find a way to tell the world about God's love for us? She did it through this image. All right. Let me continue with the story. Faustina was moved to the convent of Wilno. During her first confession, she realized that the priest was the same one whom Jesus had showed her. He was Father Michael Sopako. Faustina became very happy, and she told him about all of her visions. My daughter, you're not seeing things. Jesus has called you to remain very close to him in love and in suffering which is a sign of his love for us. Great sufferings? That's right. Although Faustina was ill for many years, she managed not to complain and carried her illness with joy. So some people thought she was pretending to be sick. This caused her to suffer even more because they didn't understand that Jesus had given her a special grace. You know, her suffering which she united to the cross of Jesus and offered to God the Father, turned into a very precious treasure. It was as if flowers grew constantly where Faustina passed. One night, 
She was in great pain and thought she was going to die. She thought about waking up the sisters because she couldn't bear any more pain. But she realized that they couldn't do anything to help her, so she let them sleep. You see? That's just the opposite of what you do. When you're sick, you don't let anyone sleep. Mom, I'm cold. Mom, I'm hot. Mom, my teeth hurt. Hey, you do that too. You're unbearable. All right, that's enough. From now on, both of you can offer to God those tough times. And if you find yourselves really sick, you can always call on me. Well now, as I was saying, Father Sapaco ordered Faustina to write a diary with all the appearances of Jesus. That's the book on Mom's bedside table. That's right. Yeah, the one without pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like books without pictures. The point is that Father Sapaco looked for a painter to do a picture of Jesus as he had appeared to St. Faustina. You know, the one with Jesus with the two rays of light from his chest. This image, Dad. Yes. And so, Faustina went many times to speak with that painter to explain to him exactly how he should paint Jesus. A few months later, the painter finished the picture and gave it to Faustina. She didn't like the picture, did she? No, she didn't. The picture was not as wonderful as her vision of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I'm very sad. Forgive me. This picture isn't as wonderful as you are. Don't worry, my child. The greatness of this image is neither in the beauty of the colors nor in the paintbrush, but in my grace. The two rays represent blood and water, which issued forth from the very depths of my tender mercy when my agonized heart was opened by a lance on the cross. These rays come out of the heart of Jesus. That's right, Sarah. Jesus suffered a lot for us. And that suffering full of love is what is coming out of his heart. But the story doesn't end here. You'll see. A short time later, Faustina was praying when she heard Jesus telling her, I desire that this image be displayed in public on the first Sunday after Easter. That Sunday is the Feast of Mercy. Impossible! Faustina was only a nun. She couldn't make a worldwide feast day. Oh, she couldn't. But you see, what was said was the will of God, and God can do everything, right? <coughs> so Faustina did everything that she could, and God took care of the rest. And so it happened that after a number of years, Father Sapoco had the opportunity to give a homily about the divine mercy and displayed the image publicly. Faustina could see the figure in the painting come to life and bless the people who were there. Only she could see him, just as it had always happened when she had a vision of Jesus. The veneration of this image of the Divine Mercy gradually spread all over Poland. As years passed, the devotion reached the whole world. This would happen years after Faustina's death. Before she died, Jesus made a final request to St. Faustina. What was it? He asked her to establish a new religious order. Oh! Faustina was only a nun! And she lived her life in a cloister. How could she found a new congregation? I don't understand. Why does God ask for such difficult things? That's exactly what Faustina thought. I wish for you to found a congregation to announce the mercy of God around the world. I am not able, Lord. Don't be afraid. I myself will provide everything you need. From that moment on, Faustina was very calm. She wanted to do God's will, since she knew that God would do everything, and she was only an instrument. Was she like the Virgin Mary when she said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word? That's right. Faustina put her life in God's hands. Faustina's health got worse, and she was admitted into a hospital. 
There, she prayed constantly for the patients around her, offering her sufferings so that they would confess their sins and die in peace with God. This is what she did until she died. And a new congregation? Faustina died without establishing a new congregation. Jesus actually only wanted her to be willing, and she offered the prayers and sacrifices for others to found it. And did others found it? Yes. Sometime later, a new religious order was born. It was dedicated to announce to the world that God is our Father, and He is waiting for us with open arms to embrace Him. Now I understand that sentence in the Gospel. It says that when the seed dies, it bears lots of fruit. That's what happened. The new religious order was born thanks to the prayers and sacrifices that Faustina offered to God during her whole life. Mom, teach me how to pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Okay. First, you have to say the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Creed. Then, on the Our Father beads, you say the following words. Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, I offer, I offer you, you the body, blood, blood soul, and, and divinity of your, of your dearly beloved Son, Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ in, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole, whole world. On the Hail Mary beads, you will say the following words. For the for sake, the sake of, his of his sorrowful passion, passion have, have mercy on us and on the whole world. world. And finally, we say these words three times. Holy, Holy God, God, Holy Mighty One, one Holy, Holy Immortal, immortal One, one. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Our Lord Jesus promised to Saint Faustina, The souls say this chapel will be embraced by my mercy during their lifetime, and especially at the hour of their death. Wow! wow. 